blessed to be in the house of the Lord. I know there is power in giving God the praise. Because we all know what happened to the walls of Jericho. And because we are here this day. And we are the called ones of the Lord. I want us to raise a shout unto Jesus. Because when we give praises to him. His glory has to come down. And I want you from the depth of your heart. I don't know what kind of like a Jericho wall has been surrounding you. I don't know what in your life you can liken unto the wall of Jericho. But I declare as we give a shout of praise to God. If you mean it from your heart. Every wall is coming down in the name of Jesus. Every mountain has to bow in the name of Jesus. Lima lazima uiname kwa jina la Yesu. This morning, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank my parents in the house, even for allowing me to come and minister on this altar, which God has given and honored them with. So I am so grateful, ma'am. Hivyo ninashukuru sana mama and also our uh, overseer in absentia na hata overseer wetu akiwa hayuko who is my spiritual father ambaye ni baba yangu wa kiroho i honor them ninawaheshimu sana i honor them ninawaheshimu and let me tell you na hata nikwambie if you can look at my life ukitizama maisha yangu it will speak loud to you itanena kwa usauti kuku wako it is because i have connected together with my family we've connected ourselves and we chose nao. to serve God even as we serve the parents who God has given to us and I believe without doubt that is the reason that God has honored me to be here today because I respect them hallelujah amen. Amen. I want also to honor the servant of God who ministered ahead of me. Let us appreciate the woman of God. Amen. That was so, so powerful. And I know that God is taking us even to another level from where we stopped. All the men and women of God in the house. I honor you and I appreciate you too. I am no better than you. It is only that God uh, 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 appointed that I be here today. And therefore you are honorable vessels of God. To every other person who is in the service today, just clap your hands as you appreciate yourself. Because you are wonderful people of God. So I would want us to go to the scriptures. And I thank God because because I'm just building on where uh, my friend Leverian stopped. And I know that God is going to bless us. The topic of my message is to remind us today that we are not mere men. We are not mere men. You are a special person in the eyes of God. And that is where our pastor was directing us even in her message today. Most of the time is when we forget who we are. We forget who 
of who we are tunasahau sisi ni wanani and that's why we find ourselves in so many struggling situations na ndio maana tunajipata katika hali ngumu za kungangana but the word of is reminding us lakini neno la bwana linachukumbusha leo we are not mere men ya kwamba sisi si watu wa kawaida and I want tu to tell us today na ningependa tusemezane leo who is seated under my voice ya kwamba hakuna yeyote aliye chini ya sauti yangu that is going to die as a mere man ambaye atakufa akiwa mtu wa kawaida is power that is working in the inside of you maana kuna nguvu zinazotenda kazi ndani yako this is not the power of ugali na tulivyoambiwa sio nguvu za sima it is not the power of any bread or any anything food that you may take sio nguvu ya mkate wala chakula chochote ambacho utakula but it is the power from on high lakini ni nguvu zinazotoka juu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu and therefore to begin i just want to read a verse in the book of uh, psalms and verses 82 kuanzia ni 82 kuanzia nitasoma m- m- kitabu katika zaburi 82 let us turn there psalms uh, chapter 82 zaburi 82 verse 6 to 7 mstari wa 6 na 7 the bible says i said you are god sons of the most high all of you nevertheless like men you shall die and fall like any prince mimi nimesema ninyi miungu na wana wa aliye juu nyote pia lakini mtakufa kama wanadamu mtaanguka kama mmoja wa wakuu bwana yesu asifiwe amen this is what the word of god is telling us hili ndilo neno la bwana linatuambia just look at the very beginning scriptures in this word tazama tu kifungu cha kwanza katika neno hili it begins to show us who the, our position or our stand inaanza kutuonyesha nafasi yetu and that is who we are and that is where we are supposed to be na hapo ndipo tulipo na hapo ndipo tunapaswa kuwa the ones call us gods when what wanatuita miungu sons of the most high wana wa mungu aliye juu and it is not an any special person na si mtu mtu specific if you are in the lord kama uko ndani ya mungu if you have become a child of god kama umefanyika mwana wa mungu this is the word that you need to own in your life. Hili ndilo neno unapaswa kumiliki you are katika maisha yako. Just another mere woman. Ya kwamba wewe si mwanamke wa kawaida tu. Just another mere man. Wewe si mwanamme wa kawaida tu. But the scripture reminds us that we are God. Lakini neno linatukumbusha sisi ni miungu. Because just like our heavenly father is, kama vile baba yetu wa mbinguni alivyo, that is how he expects us to be. Ndivyo anatutarajia tuwe. That how God want us to reign here on this Hivyo earth. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu anataka tutawale katika ulimwengu huu. He has that power how he works in heaven. Alivyo na nguvu anavyofanya kazi katika mbingu. He is telling us all he's reminding us that we are God. Anatuambia na anatukumbusha sisi that ni is Mungu. To tell us that we are like him anatuambia sisi ni sawa na yeye because of our lack of understanding lakini kwa kukosa kwetu kuelewa because of us not knowing and understanding who where we belong kwa kutojua na kuelewa sisi ni wawapi that is why the scripture is saying ndio maana neno linasema that you will just die like a mere man ya kwamba utakufa tu kama mwanadamu mwingine to declare today nataka mtu akili i refuse to die like a mere man i refuse to die like a mere man live like a mere man nakataa kuishi kama mtu wa kawaida i know where i belong maana ninajua mimi ni wawapi because i know who is in the inside of me maana najua ni nani aliye ndani yangu praise the lord amen let us read a scripture in the book of uh, romans chapter 8 tusome kifungu katika warumi na because 8. i want us to know why should we not allow ourselves to die like mere men maana nataka tuelewe kwa nini tusijiruhusu kufa kama watu wa kawaida in the book of romans chapter 8 and verses 11 Warumi 8:11 I believe we are there The word says but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead shall give life also to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwelt in you Lakini so make Kiswahili lakini ikiwa roho yake yeye aliyemfufua Yesu katika wafu anakaa ndani yenu yeye aliyemfufua Kristo Yesu katika wafu ataiuhisha 
na miili yenu iliyo katika hali ya kufa kwa roho wake aliyekaa ndani yenu praise the lord amen bwana yesu asifiwe amen with by, 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 by the uh, by the making of men kwa ku, kwa, ku, kwa mambo ya wanadamu on how we were born na jinsi tulivyozaliwa it is given that a man should die ime ni kawaida mwanadamu anapaswa afe because the scriptures is very clear maana vifungu viwazi that a man is born and he will live ya kwamba mwanadamu amezaliwa na ataishi at one time lakini imewekwa katika muda fulani man is going to die ya kwamba atakufa but i thank god because of us who are born again lakini nashukuru mungu kwa sisi tuliookoka because even though we were dead once once we were dead in sin kwa maana hata kama siku moja tulikuwa tumekufa katika dhambi of us accepting jesus in our life kwa sisi kumkubali yesu katika maisha yetu that which had 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 been declared dead in us kile kilichokuwa kimetangazwa kimekufa ndani yetu by the working of the power of god in our lives kwa kutenda kazi kwa nguvu za bwana ndani ya maisha yetu to live again tulifanywa kuishi tena and this is what the scripture is telling us na ndivyo kifungu kinatuambia that is that power ya kwamba kama nguvu hizo raise jesus christ from the dead ambazo zilimfufua yesu kutoka kwenye kifo is working in the inside of us zinatenda kazi ndani yetu the same spirit that raised christ jesus from the dead nguvu hizo zilizomfufua yesu that kutoka kwa watu is going to give us power roho huyo atatupa nguvu that spirit is going to give us strength nguvu huyo roho huyo atatupa nguvu and we are not going to be like any other men na hatutakuwa kama mtu We are not going to live like other men live without understanding. Hatutaishi kama watu wengine wanaoishi bila kuelewa. in Christ Jesus. Maana sisi tulio ndani ya Kristo. It is not us again who live. Sio sisi tena tunaoishi. It is not you us again who live. Sio wewe unayeishi tena. But it is Christ Jesus that is in you. Lakini ni Kristo aliye ndani yako. For that where you were told that you cannot go. Kwa pale uliambiwa uwezi enda. Which was written that you cannot do kila kilichoandikwa uwezi tenda milango iliyofungwa ya kwamba uwezi ingia kwa maana kuna, kuna roho tofauti anayetenda ndani yako milango inapoona itokezea haina mambo mengine lazima ifunguke maana umebeba In mungu the name of Jesus Christ. Yesu. and therefore i came to remind us hivyo nimekuja tukumbushane do not demean yourself usijishushe chini do not live like you who do not know who you are usiishi kama asiyejielewa because the bible is very clear maana biblia iwazi we are not the ones who live we are no longer the ones who live ya kwamba sio sisi tunaoishi tena watu walisema siwezi fanya ile kazi walisema siwezi chukua fursa maana sio kwa nguvu zako si kwa kuelewa kwako si kwa kile watu wanakuita si kwa zile karatasi ulizo nazo lakini kuna nguvu tofauti nimekuja kusema kuna nguvu tofauti ambayo imepewa imepewa ambayo imewekwa ndani yetu wanaposema uwezi tena unasimama kwa usiri unasimama kwa usiri na unasema najua ninajua mimi ni wanani najua mimi ni nani sio yule watu wanaoona wanajua sio yule ambao wanaona mimi ni mwana wa Yesu mimi ni mwana wa Mungu hivyo nimekuja kuambia mtu hapa nimekuja kuambia mtu hapa wewe si mtu wa kawaida wewe si wa kawaida kwa jina la Yesu we are going to read a scripture tutasoma kifungu and i want us to have a revelation of what god does in our lives na ninataka tupate ufunuo wa kile mungu anatenda ndani yetu maana anapoingia ndani yako to turn around every accusation anaweza geuza kila lawama to turn around every history of men concerning you anageuza historia yote watu walio nayo kuhusu and we are going to read here a story in the book of mark chapter 5 tutasoma hadithi katika mariko 5 uh, 
concerning a certain woman flani, and the Lord is going to bless us. In the book of Mark chapter 5 Mariko tano, we are reading from verses 25. Wa tano. This is what happened to this woman. Iki nicho kilicho because kwa mwana she huyu. encountered somebody who was different from other people that surrounded her. Maana alipatana na mwana, mwana tofauti na wala you allow yourself to walk with this God. Na ukijiruhusu kutembea na huyu mungu. If you allow to acquaint yourself with this Jesus. Ukikubali kuhusishwa na huyu Yesu. If you allow yourself to reign with this Christ. Ukikubali kutawala na huyu Yesu. The condition that come you away. Hali yote inayokutia. Which you feel like you cannot make it. Ambayo unaona kana kwamba uwezi kwa ulu. Which you feel like you cannot overcome. Unaona kana kwamba uwezi pita. When you have this call. Ukiwa na huyu Yesu. When Jesus is together with you. Yesu wakiwa pamoja na we. Every other stress has to obey. Hali yoyote ile lazima in the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. Media if we are there and a woman who uh, sorry I wanted first of all to go to Luke. Let us see first of all the book of Luke 7. Twende Luke 7. In the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 11. Luke 7 kumina moja. And it came to pass soon afterwards that he went to a city called Nine and his disciples went with him and a great multitude and a great multitude now when he drew near to the gate of the city behold there was carried out one that was dead the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her let's go on and when the Lord saw her she had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came nigh and touched the bear, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Read. Badae kidogo alikuenda mbaka mji moja uituao nain. Na wanafunzi wake walifuatana nae pamoja na mkutano mkubwa. Na walipo karibia lango la mji, hapo palikuwa na maiti anaye chukuliwa nje. Ni mwana pekee wa mamae ambaye ni mjane. Na watu wa mjini, watu wa mjini wengi walikuwa pamoja nae. Bwana alipo muona, alimuonea huruma, akamwambia usilie. Akakaribia, akaliguza jeneza. Wale walio kuwa wakilichukua, wakasimama akasema kijana I, na kuambia inuka yule maiti akainuka akaketi akaanza kusema akampa mama yake bwana yesu asifiwe amen hallelujah amen the scripture is very clear fungu gliwazi that this was a procession of a burial ya kwamba huu ulikuwa ni umati unaenda kwa mazishi i began to say that we are not going to die like mere men na nilianza kusema hatutakufa kama watu wa kawaida we are not going to allow to bury our families on our businesses on anything that has been given to us hatutakubali kuzika familia yetu au chochote ambacho tumepewa it's a power that we have encountered. Kuna nguvu ambayo and when na we yo, encounter this power, na na nguvu everything hi, that concerns us changes completely. This is a story where there was a procession where they were going to bury a man. Ni hadithi ambayo tunaona watu the Bible says that mtu. this was the only son of this woman. Biblia inasema alikuwa mwana peke wa huyu mama. And on top of this issue, this woman was a widow. Na kuongezea zaidi mwanamke huyu alikuwa mjane. But what pains me mostly, lakini kinacho ni uzunisha zaidi, is that we are taught there was a multitude of men. Ni vile tunambiwa kulikuwa na kundi kubwa la watu. And they were very comfortable about the situation. Na walikuwa wameridhika na hali hiyo. Because they were, they were, they were, they were, they were escorting this woman to go to the grave. Maana walikuwa na mzindikisha mzane huyu kwenda kwenye makaburi. So that they can go and pare her son. Ili wakamzike mwanawe. But I thank God because mungu kwa when sababu, the power that is, I'm talking about appeared kwa sababu ya nguvu ambazo ni nazo nazo nenezo na potekea I am talking about that is operating in our lives nguvu ambazo zinafanya kazi katika when maisha yetu when this power showed up nguvu hizi zilipo jitokeza I am weza. telling you for sure this story changed na wambia kwa hakika hadithi this ilibadilika this situation changed completely hiyo and that's why I came to tell us today we are not going to bury our stories 
situation none of us is going to bury our dream we refuse yake. to bury our visions because there is a power that is in the inside of us when we identify with the source of this power we are able to speak to every situation that confronts us and that situation bows and it obeys the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ therefore Jesus appears in the procession for the burial and how I pray in the name of Jesus that if Jesus appeared today to any of us that is going to bury her dream anyone that is ready to go and bury her family anyone that is ready to give up I pray that this power encounter with you may power position you to where you belong in the name of Jesus I say we are not going to die we were told that Elijah desired to die he went and slept under the tree but he came to say we were not of the them that are dying we are not of them Jesus Christ appeared even though they were calling the situation death even though they were ready to go and bury this man Jesus declared that the power of resurrection has come the power of the living has come there will be no more burial but which was an out it is going to live again and at the end of this story we see that Jesus called for this man and he was able to present the son back to the man I pray in the name of Jesus that Jesus is calling our situation today Jesus is calling our defeat today Jesus is calling that disease today the power of every sickness is going to bow before the power of God and you are walking out free in the name of Jesus you are walking free with your healing you are walking free with your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ there is no barrier in the name of Jesus no barrier in our lives no barrier in our families no barrier for your dreams because the power that is in the inside of you speaks greater things speaks powerful things in the name of Jesus somebody say I refuse to die I refuse to die because I'm not a mere man in the name of Jesus I was trying to look at the situation where we power our let's say our phones it will be a stupid thing if somebody will go and put the charger on the socket and you wanted to power up your phone or even your laptop of, or any gadget and instead of switching on the socket you just press it there and assume that it is going to be powered I am telling you even if it will take a whole day when you go back to pick that gadget if it was uh, completely dead without power that is how you will find it but I want to say that our situation is different there are those days that we lived in ignorance where we were not fired up where we were not powered up but in the moment we met Jesus it is like we were put in 
to the socket. We want light into the socket. So that we may begin to operate in power. So that our lives may be charged. And therefore you will be a, 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 a very funny Christian. If you are saying that you are in this class. And you continue in your struggles. You continue kwako. in your suffering. Ubaki katika kuteseka you kwako. You continue with your mem, messy, messy situation. Ubaki katika hali yako ya kungangana. It is only because of lack of understanding. Kwa kukosa tu maarifa. It is because you don't understand where you have been planting. Ni vile uelewi wewe umetiwa wapi. And where our life has been buried. Na mahali maisha yetu ya mezikwa. It is in Christ. Ni ndani ya Kristo. It is in Christ Jesus. Ni kwa Kristo Yesu. So that what our God is. Na kwamba kile Mungu wetu alicho. We become. Hata sisi tuwe in the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. So if your father is rich. Hivyo kama baba yako ni tajiri. It is a foolish thing. Ni kitu cha upofu to continue struggling in poverty ubaki kungangana katika umaskini because you don't know what power operates in you maana hujui nguvu zinazoenda hizi ndani yako in the name of jesus hivyo naomba kwa jina la yesu the pope prays for the church paulo anapoombea kanisa in the philip ephesians katika kitabu cha waefeso that our eyes be opened ya kwamba macho yetu yafunguliwe so that we understand be enlightened macho ya kuelewa kwetu oh, yafunguliwe in the name of jesus naomba kwa jina la yesu light and time to us na kwamba mwanga huu uingie ndani yetu light and time our eyes mwanga huu uingie kwa macho yetu we are not yetu. going to be ignorant anymore ya kwamba hatutabaki wapuka we kutena we are not going to live an ignorant christian life hatutaishi maisha ya upumbavu ya kikristo because there is power in the inside of us maana kuna nguvu ndani yetu and power it is jesus christ na nguvu hizi ni yesu kristo it is jesus in you. Ni Yesu ndani yako. The hope of glory. Tumaini la utukufu. Christ in you. Ni Yesu ndani the yako. The hope of glory. Tumaini la utukufu. Therefore if you know him. Hivyo kama unamjua. You are not going to be just there. Hautakuwa hapo tu. Somebody who is to be helped. Mtu ambaye anapaswa kusaidiwa. Somebody who is a beggar. Mtu ambaye ni omba omba. Somebody who is weak. Mtu ambaye yuko dhaifu. You are going to stand up straight. Utasimama kwa ujasiri. Square your shoulders. Na uinu and you say I have a big God. Na useme nina Mungu mkuu. I have a big God. Nina Mungu mkuu. Even if they have told you. Hata kama wamekuambia. You cannot win that tender. Ya kwamba huwezi shinda tena hiyo. You go to the cross of prayer. Utaenda katika mahali wako pa siri. Na uanze kutangaza. It is the word of a man. Ni neno tu la kinywa. My father in heaven. Lakini baba yangu mbinguni. He said I am more than a conqueror. Anasema mimi ni zaidi ya mshindi. Nothing is going to stop me. Hivyo hakuna kitakacho to hinder me kuna kitakacho nipinde i have the power maana nina nguvu in the inside of me ndani yangu in the name of jesus jina la yesu so when we encounter this power hivyo tunapopatana na nguvu hii situation that surround us kila hali inayotuzingira it changes completely inabadilika kabisa what a joy it was ni furaha iliyoje for a woman who was so desperate kwa mwanamke aliyekuwa amekata tamaa suffered all her life mtu ambaye ameteseka maisha yake yote akilea mwanawe pekee kisha ghafla mwanawe anafa she had so high hopes in him alikuwa na matumaini makuu ndani yake now her hope had gone na sasa tumaini lake limeenda lakini sifa kwa bwana since our struggle anayeona kungangana kwetu identifies with us anatambuli anajitambulisha na anaona machini yetu identifies with us anajitambulisha na sisi anayeona machozi yetu identifies with us anajitambulisha na sisi what happened hiki ndicho kilichotendeka they are going to bury the son walivodhani wanaenda kumzika mwanawe power of resurrection appear nguvu za uvuvuo zikatokea resurrection appear nguvu za uvuvuo zikatokea i pray for us today na hiki ndicho naomba kwetu leo you think that you are going to die in hali hile unayoenda utakufa ndani is going just to be a stepping stone kwambia ni jiwe la kusimamia tu to your position na wewe kuinuka katika nafasi yako to your victory ili uinuke katika ushindi to your testimony ili uinuke kwa ushindi in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu god in the name of god hakuna kifo kwa jina la yesu to bury their dreams hakuna atakayezika ndoto yake kwa jina la yesu what god said you are kile 
Mungu alisema wewe ni wewe. God has purpose for your life. Kile Mungu amekusudia kwa maisha yako. Utakuwa hicho kwa jina la Yesu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. Even though this woman was a widow. Hata kama mwanamke huyu alikuwa mzazi. God had destined. Yesu alikuwa anampangilio. There is no way this son is going to die. Ya kwamba hakuna vile mwana huyu atakufa. The situation predicted death. Hata kama hali ilitabiri kifo at the right time katika wakati ambao ulikuwa Jesus appeared Yesu alitokea Jesus appeared Yesu alitokea and even now they have declared hata kama wametangaza that you are not going to make it ya kwamba hautafaulu they are seeing you as good for nothing wanakuona kama wewe haufai wait a minute until Jesus appears goja muda kidogo hadi Yesu atokee until Jesus show up goja kidogo hadi Yesu angurume different story utakuwa na hadithi tofauti a different story utakuwa na hadithi Report concerning you. Ambayo itasemwa kukuhusu. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. I am speaking about. Nina nena kuhusu connecting ourselves. Kujiunganisha to the source of power. Kwa ki, kile kinacholeta moto. That is in the inside of us. Ambacho kiko ndani yetu. Because we are told the same power. Maana tunasema nguvu hiyo was able to raise Jesus. Iliweza kumfufua Yesu from the dead. Kutoka kwa wafu. And that is the power. Na hiyo ndiyo nguvu. That is operating in you. Ambayo inatenda kazi inayotenda kazi ndani yangu identify with it ni hivyo nikijitambulisha nayo there is nowhere i cannot go hakuna popote siwezi there enda there is nothing that i cannot do hakuna chochote siwezi tenda bwana yesu asifiwe amen bwana yesu asifiwe amen bwana asifiwe amen we are not mere men sisi si watu wa kawaida we are powerful in the lord jesus sisi ni wanguvu ndani ya yesu in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu as i near to wind up ninapokaribia kumaliza let us see what the bible says concerning the scripture that had been shot on the screen in the book of mark tutatazama katika kitabu cha marko Mark 5 and verses 25. Mariko 5 mstari wa 25. And a woman who had an issue of blood 12 years. Na mwanamke mmoja mwenye kutoka damu muda wa miaka 12. Let's continue. Now when it Are we there? And had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. Having heard the things concerning Jesus came in the crowd behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch but this garment i shall be made whole and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her plague let's just go up to that point na mwanamke mmoja mwenye kutoka damu muda wa miaka 12 na kuteswa mengi kwa mikono ya matibabu ya matibabu wengi sorry Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uh, because of time let's just move on. We are told of this woman, tunanena kuhusu mwanamke huyu who had an issue of blood for 12 years. Ambaye aliteseka na shida ya damu kwa miaka 12. And when I was reading concerning the story of this woman, na nilipokuwa nikisoma hadithi ya mwanamke huyu, whenever we see or we uh, we we read or we at study about blood tunapozungumza hau kusoma kuhusu damu you, you know blood is, aso, is, is associated with life damu inahusa, inahusishwa na maisha and therefore in a simple term hivyo katika hali ya ukawaida it means that the, the life was going out in of this woman inamaanisha maisha yalikuwa yanamtoka mwanamke huyu she was experiencing a situation that was leading to her death alikuwa katika hali ambayo ilikuwa inaelekea katika kifo chake imagine for 12 years tazamia miaka 12 she was 
bleeding for 12 years. Alikuwa anatokwa na damu kwa miaka 10 miwili. Life was going out of this woman for 12 years. Maisha yalikuwa yanamuondokea mwanamke huyu kwa miaka 10 na miwili. For lack of better words. Kwa kukosa neno ambalo ni sawa. She can just be likened to a dead person. Anaweza linganishwa tu na mtu aliyekufa. Because how do you expect a person to bleed for 12 years? Maana unatarajiaje mtu atokwe damu miaka 10 na miwili? She is still living all in a stable condition. Na bado yuko katika hali ya ukawaida. That cannot be in the book. Hiyo haiwezi kuwa katika vitabu. Because this is life that was going out. Maana haya ni maisha yaliyokuwa yakimuondokea. This woman was being faced with a situation of death. Mwanamke huyu alikuwa katika hali ya kufa. But what saved this woman? Lakini kilichomwokoa mwanamke huyu she came back to her senses. Ni wakati alipojirudia and she realized na akatambua that I have suffered for so many years. Ya kwamba nimeteseka kwa muda mrefu. to the physician. Nimeendea matabibu. I have gone to the sorcerers. Nimeendea waganga. I have sought help where I knew good I could be helped. Nimetafuta msaada kote nilikojua ningesaidika. But there is nothing that has happened in my life. Lakini hakuna ambacho kimetendeka kwa maisha yangu. This woman realized. Alipogundua. There is a different source of power. Ya kwamba kuna nguvu nyingine. There is a different place that I can plant myself. Kuna mahali ambapo naweza kuhusisha. And my situation changes completely. Na hali yangu igeuzwe kabisa. We are told that is what this Suman did. Tunaambiwa hivyo ndivyo mwanamke huyu alivyotenda. Rounds were so many. Hata kama umati ulikuwa mkubwa. The situation could not allow her to access to her healing. Hali yake haingemruhusu kufikia upanyaji wake. The condition that was surrounding her. Lakini licha ya hali ilikuwa ikimzingira. Aliamua kwa mawazo yake. Na akasema what they are going to say Sijali watakachosema I don't care what they are going to do to me Sijali watakachonifanyia Because it is me who has suffered Lakini kwa sababu ni mimi nimeteseka It is me who look like I am dying Maana ni mimi nakaa kama kwamba nafa It is nafa. me who knows the pain that I have gone through Ni mimi najua machungu nayopitia I have been to defy all the odds Itajitakeuza hali zote Squeeze my way Itajifinyilia Until I plug myself Hadi nifijifikishe to the source of power kwenye nguvu and when the woman was able to access the power na alipofikiza fikia nguvu we are told immediately tunaambiwa mara hiyo hiyo hapo na hapo problem that lasted for 12 years hali iliyomsumbua kwa miaka 10 na miwili realization of the source of power kwa kutambua nguvu zilizo hapo hali hiyo ikageuzwa kabisa in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu my brother my sister ndugu yangu dada yangu yourself for a long time umeteseka kwa muda mrefu you have not allowed yourself maana hujajiruhusu to access the power kufikia nguvu that you have been given ambayo zao umepewa to access the power kufikia nguvu that has been put in the inside of you ambazo zimewekwa ndani yako i pray in the name of jesus jinsi naomba kwa jina la yesu that is being dawned on by this light ya kwamba mtu anaonyeshwa na mwangu to realize na tutachambua that you are not supposed to die in that situation. Ya kwamba hufai kufa katika hali hiyo. You are not supposed to continue suffering in that sickness. Haupasi kuendelea kuteseka kwa ugonjwa huo. You are not supposed to continue suffering in that poverty. Haupasi kuendelea kuteseka kwa maskini. Tulivyoambiwa to square ourselves up. Lazima tujiweke tayari. To square ourselves up. Lazima tujiweke. And we are rise. Tuinuke. Let us plan our tujihusishe to the power that is our Lord Jesus. Kwa nguvu ambazo ni Yesu Kristo. Every situation change. Ambaye anageuza kila hali. In the name of Jesus. La Yesu. This woman suffered a lot. Mwanamke huyu aliteseka sana. A lot of her wealth. Alipoteza mali yake nyingi. She had no access to the power. Maana hakuwa ameunganishwa na nguvu. She came to the access. Lakini alipopatana. She encountered Jesus. Alipopatana na Yesu. I am telling you she totally changed. Nakwambia hadi jina la Yesu. And our last scripture even as I wind up. Kifungu chetu cha mwisho ninapomaliza. We are reading in the book of Ephesians 
I want us to see where our position is. When we realize our position of power. The Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 6. Mstari wa sita. And raised us up with him. And made us to sit with him. In the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Aka tufufua pamoja nae. Aka tuketisha pamoja nae. Katika ulimwengu wa roho. Katika Christo Yesu. Son of God. Mwana wa mungu. That is your position. Hiyo ndiyo sehemu yako. When you realize the power that is in the inside of you. Unapo tambua nguvu zilizo ndani yako. When you realize God. God who has saved you. When you realize he who that is working in the inside of you. This is what the word says. That he has raised us up. And he has made us to sit. In the highly praises. Where we are reigning together with him. And therefore when you come to this understanding. There is no way you can continue continue to suffer in the conditions that are surrounding you because boldly you will stand and you declare to every situation I know where is my position I know from the position I am reigning I am sitting on the heavenly praise together with Christ Jesus and that is where I am ruling from in the name of Jesus so I came to tell us that we are not going to die in the positions that we are in in the conditions that situation have pressed us because we have a source of power we have a source of power and when we access that power hallelujah when we access that of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.